You're probably familiar with the term autonomous navigation. If you've heard of self-driving cars, then you know what I'm talking about. These cars can drive you to your destination without you touching the steering wheel. If you've ever ordered something from Amazon, chances are a robot was involved somehow in the packing process. Now, here's a question. Do you think that if I grab an Amazon robot, strap it on top of a car, and then adjust some wiring so it can steer the car somehow, do you think it will function as intended? What about the other way around? The key idea is that some robots are meant for outdoor and others indoor. But what if we could have both? Imagine this. You order something online, your package arrives at the main entrance of your workplace via a self-driving car. And then, a robot hops off with your package, goes through reception, and delivers it straight to your office. It sounds simple, and we should be able to do it, but we don't have the training data for it. You see, the outdoor environment is very different from the indoor environment. For one, there are no walls. It's also a lot more open. Then, once you are indoors, you may no longer be able to rely on things like GPS. If you have a robot that is only trained in one of these environments, then it will never be able to fully accomplish the task of going from the roadside into a building and then to your office. And that's exactly what we've been doing. My name is John Abanis. I am a summer researcher here at the AI Force Lab at NYU Tendon, led by Professor Chen Fang. And in this video, I want to present what we've been doing so far and what we hope to accomplish. So here's the system we have for data collection. We have a power bank that's connected to this wire. And this wire is connected to a type of splitter that will divide the voltage into our main computer. This, which is a Lattic Panda Mu, and also to our LiDAR, which is a Velodyne, or sorry, a Livebox Mid 360. And we also have a 360 camera that is connected via USB to our computer. To simplify data collection, I've de developed an app that does everything needed. On the first tab, you can enter the remote details to access the computer via remote SSH. Once you're connected, you can go to the second tab to operate it. You can do things like start and stop the sensors, look at the camera preview, and even record data. Finally, this analytics tab tells you the status of your sensors. So here I can see that my camera is working correctly and is publishing at around 30 frames per second. Same thing for my LiDAR, LiDAR and IMU. But before we collect data, we need to do one last thing, which is to calibrate our sensors. People often come to me and ask if I like playing chess because I always have these checkerboards in handy. Well, really, they're just really good for corner detection. These corners in the checkerboards are really easy for the camera to detect. And so you can use it for sensor calibration. Now, using OpenCV, we can detect the corners. This helps us undistort the image. Then, we can align the image to our point cloud to get an accurate match. You'll see the benefits of this just shortly after we collect the data. So we went outside and collected some data. This is the raw video feed. Now, thanks to our chess skills, we can undistort this video. Using R3 Live, we can then combine the point cloud to create a 3D map of our environment. And this is where we are right now. Our upcoming task is to create not just a 3D map, but an actual simulated environment. In doing so, we hope to contribute to the ever-going field of automation so that one day, we can have robots delivering from the curb to your door. Thank you.